when we are trying to assess the performance of a system, the key parameters are the performance of the processor, the cost, size, security, reliability, and power consumption. And the performance of the application that will run on the system depends upon the raw speed of the processor, the instruction set architecture that is being used by the machine, the choice of the implementation language of the application, the efficiency of the compiler which is compiling that program to machine language and the skill of programming that is done to implement the application. We know when we talk about the performance of a processor, there is a system clock and all the operations which are performed by the processor are governed by this system clock. So typically all operations will begin with the pulse of the clock and the speed the processor will now be dictated by the pulse frequency produced by the clock and this frequency is measured in cycles per second or hertz. Typically in the system these clock signals are generated by a quartz signal which generates a constant sine wave when power is applied and this wave is converted into a digital voltage pulse stream. So one increment or pulse of the clock is referred to as the clock cycle. So if these are the pulses that are being generated by the clock, then this is one clock cycle. And the time between these pulses is known as the cycle time. So this is the time of the clock cycle. And the rate of this clock is referred to as the clock rate or the clock speed. So this the rate would be equal to or the frequency will be equal to 1 upon t. So if we have a 1 gigahertz processor that means it is receiving 1 billion 10 to the power of 9 pulses per second. 1 gigahertz would refer to 10 to the power of 9 pulses per second which is referring to the hertz. So if we talk about the instruction execution rate the processor is driven by a clock with this constant frequency or the clock rate which is known as f and we know that this f will be inverse of the clock cycle time or we can say that the clock cycle time will be inverse of the clock rate. So what is the instruction count? First we have to count the number of machine instructions that are being executed. So here we are talking about the actual machine instructions which will be executed and not the instructions in the program. And when we talk about instruction count, we are also referring to the dynamic instruction count, which means that let's say if this is a program and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 instructions. So the static instruction count is 8. But when this program is actually executed, these instructions in the, in, in the loop will be executed multiple number of times. Let's say for a particular execution of this program, this loop is ex executed 5 times. So these 3 instructions are being executed 5 into 3 which is 15 times plus we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 instructions which are outside the loop. So the dynamic instruction count would be 15 plus 5 which is equal to 20. So while the static instruction count was 8, the dynamic instruction count becomes 20. So when we are talking about the instruction execution rate, we are referring to the dynamic instruction count. So this is the number of execution of the instructions and not the number of instructions which are present in the object code of the program. That would be the static count. So the average cycles per instruction is referred to as CPI, which is the average number of clock cycles required for one instruction. Each instruction would require, each different type of instruction would require different number of clock cycles. So the average number of clock cycles per instruction is referred to as the CPI or clock cycles per instruction. So then 
what will be the execution time t if ic is our instruction count which is the number of instructions executed or the dynamic instruction count this multiplied by clock cycles per instruction this will give us the total number of clock cycles that are required now once we know the total number of clock cycles that are required we multiply that with the clock cycle time so this will give us the total execution time t and we also know that this clock cycle time is inverse of the clock rate which is the f so we can also say that t is equal to ic into cpi clock cycles per instruction upon the clock rate and this equation is referred to as the basic performance equation what is the instruction throughput sometimes we can also measure or compare the performance of two machines by comparing the throughput this is the number of instructions executed per second we know that in this much time i see number of instructions are being executed so how many instructions per second are being computed we will have to do ic upon t this will give us the number of instructions executed per second and if we look at this equation we see that ic upon t will be equal to f upon cpi so this becomes the throughput so our throughput becomes f upon cpi or the number of instructions executed divided by the total execution time the instruction execution rate or the number of instructions executed per second would be too large so we have another metric which is known as mips or millions of instructions per second so we divide the total number of instructions that the throughput the total number of instructions executed by second by a million so if we divide ic by t by a million or ic by t we also know is e is equal to f upon cpi we are dividing this by 10 to the power of 6 this will gives a, give us the mips count which is the how many millions of instructions are being executed per second a similar metric is mflops which is millions of floating point operations per second performance measure with floating point instructions so we know that if we know that our machine is performing so many floating point operations in one second this is also a metric of comparison of two machines and this is common in many scientific and game applications and it is computed as the number of executed floating point operations in a program divided by the execution time and divided by a million because we want to compute the m flops so divided by 10 to the power of 6 also we have just discussed earlier the number of cycles per instruction and we said that all instructions do not require the same number of cycles if all instructions required same number then the cpi would be a constant value but for different types of instructions different number of clock cycles are required so let's say that for instruction type i the cpi is cpi subscript i and if i i is the number of executed instructions of type i for a given program then the overall cpi would be the cpi for that particular kind of instruction divided by the total count or the instruction count so let's take an example where this will become more clear so consider the execution of a program that results in the execution of 2 million instructions on a 400 megahertz processor the program consists of four major types of instructions so the instruction mix and the cpi for each instruction type are given below so these are the four major types of instructions arithmetic and logic load store with a cache hit branch and memory reference with a cache miss 
and the CPI and the instruction mix is given. So we know that for arithmetic and logic instruction, the clock cycle per instruction is one. And we know that in our whole program, so this is the instruction mix, that in a whole program, 60% of the instructions are of this type. So in this example, it's given this. The, the CPI for load store instruction with cash hit is two. And the, there are 18% such instructions. For branch instructions, the CPI is four and there are 12% of such instructions and memory reference with cash miss, the CPI is eight and there are 10% of such instructions. So the total instruction count that is given to us is 200 million, which is 202 10 to the power of six. Clock frequency is F 400 megahertz. We are converting this into hertz by multiplying it by 10 to the power of six. So what will be the total number of clock cycles? So we know that 60% of the total are in arithmetic and logic. So 0 0.60 of the total, which is IC or 202 10 to the power of six. And these many instructions have one clock cycle per instruction. So the total number of clock cycle per arithmetic and logic would be 0 0.6 into IC into one plus these many clock cycles for the load store with cash hit instruction 0.18% into IC that will give us the number of instructions of this kind multiplied by the clock cycle per instruction plus these, these many for the branch instructions and these many for the memory reference instructions. This gives us a total of 2.24 IC. So what is the average or overall clock cycle per instruction? That would be the total number of clock cycles divided by the number of instructions. So this divided by the total number of instructions, which is IC. So this gives us a CPI of 2.24. What will be the execution time? So whatever are our total number of clock cycles, which is C, which we have computed, multiplied by the clock cycle time, or we can say divided by F, which is the clock rate. So these are the total number of clock cycles that we computed 2.24 into IC. So now we are multiplying that by IC, which was our instruction count 200 into 10 to the power of six, divided by the clock rate, which gives us 1.12 seconds. So in 1.12 seconds, these many instructions were executed. So now if we have to compute the throughput, we'll do it like this throughput is number of instructions per second. This is how we compute the throughput. And we have seen it earlier that it is also equal to F upon C, CPI or IC upon T. So in 1.12 second, these many instructions were executed. So in one second, 210 to the power of six divided by 1.12 instructions will be executed. And if we divide this, this gives us 178.57 into 10 to the power of six instructions per second. This becomes our throughput. And if we have to compute the MIPS, what is that? Millions of instructions per second. We already have our instructions per second. We divided by a million. So we divide this throughput by a million, that means divided by 10 to the power of six, this will cancel. So this becomes our MIPS, which is million instructions per second. So this is how we assess the performance of a processor.